If you're doing any sort of environment work, then you probably are going to need to create some sort of grass for your scene. There's lots of ways that you can go about creating grass, and one of the most popular ways to do that is to use SpeedTree. It's a semi-procedural type program that you can generate lots of different uh, variations super quickly, and it's a great program, but it costs uh, like $700 or something like that for the modeler, um, and then any sort of generators and, and textures on top of that that are able to be purchased with it. Um, are significantly more money on top of that to get a bunch of different things. So we can actually go about creating grass inside of Houdini, and we're gonna show you how you can go about doing that today. And then you can also use this generator to generate fields of grass, like you see here. So let's go ahead, jump in, and show you how you can create a grass generator. So drop down a geometry node, and then to start off with, to make our grass, we're gonna use a grid. Just zoom in here. And then we only want a size of one. And then I'm gonna set the rows down to three, just so that we have one going down the center and then our two along the sides and then our columns. We'll just leave at 10 for now. So this would be where you're controlling the, basically how detailed the grass is. Um, but we'll go over that in just a second. So from here, we're going to need to make it look like grass. So we're going to use a bend node. So we'll drop that in. And then actually, we, before we do that, let's go back to this grid. And we want to actually offset this. And the, let's go to the X direction. So we'll set it 5 because that's half of the height of our plane here. And we want it to start at the origin just for simplicity's sake for the bend node. So for our bend node here, we want to scroll on down to the set capture region and we'll just click at the origin and then click at the end of our plane. And we'll set this capture length just to 10 because that's the size of our plane. And that's looking good so far. So now we can just click this bend and you can see that we're affecting our geometry. So I'm gonna set this to negative 90, just so that we have the normal facing up here in a second. But we also want to, if I actually set that back to zero for a second, we want to make it look like grass because this doesn't really look like grass. So to do that, let's enable this taper, and then we want to set this down to zero. And now it looks a little bit more like grass but it's facing the wrong direction. We want it to be facing upwards. So let's go ahead and drop a transform node. And then we'll set this to 90. And now it's, it's facing up like it's sticking out of the ground. And you can see that now it's coming to a point, which is exactly what we want for a grass. So Let's go ahead and we're gonna create the generator now for the clump. So to do that, we're gonna use a circle and we'll set the rotation to negative 90, I believe it is. Yep, negative 90 on the X. And let's scale this up just so that we have pretty decent size in comparison to our grass blade here. And then from there, we're going to need to scatter some points onto this circle to get the points that we're gonna to copy to, to make our generator. So let's drop this down, maybe to something like 21, probably would work. And then we'll do a copy stamp so that we can copy these grass blades onto these points. So that's looking good so far. Now, obviously not all grass faces the same way, so we need to add some variation to that. So how do we go about doing that? we're going to use this copy stamp node. So we need to enable the stamp inputs and then we need to set our rotation. So we're gonna do a rotation of X or our, our variables, sorry, we need to set our variables. So we're gonna use rotation X and then we're also gonna randomize the scale. So how do we go about doing that? So we're gonna do a random and we're gonna use the point number so that we always have a different value in here. And then we're going to fit that between, so it starts at zero to one, random generates a number from zero to one, and then we wanna set this from zero to 360, 
whoops, 360. And we should be good there. And then for our scale, we're gonna do essentially the same thing. So we'll do fit, and then we'll type in random at our point number, again, to generate a different number every time for every single point, and then zero to one. And then let's do 0.7 to 1.3. That'll sound good. So it doesn't do anything right away because we have to enable this. And we are also need to randomize our bend. So we're gonna do our bend as well and essentially the same thing. So we're gonna fit and then random at pt num zero to one. And then we wanna do maybe, so our, our bend was negative uh, 90 with all of these uh, grass blades right here. So let's do maybe negative 30 to negative 90. And we'll call that good. So now we need to jump into our transform node. And then in our rotation, we want to do stamp. And then we need to identify the node that we're going to be using our stamps from. So we'll do the copy one. And then we'll do rotation x. And then we need a default value. So if it fails for some reason, we'll just set the rotation to zero. So now you can see that we have a bunch of random rotation inside of our grass. So let's also change the scale. So we can actually just go ahead, we're gonna copy the same thing and just paste it in here, but we wanna change this up a little bit. So we'll do scale, and then we don't wanna set it to zero because if we set it to zero, it, if it fails for some reason, it's just gonna make our model infinitesimally small and you won't be able to see it. So let's do a scale of one. So now you can see something slightly changed there. So our grass is slightly different sizes. If I actually go up to our bend here and I set this to zero, you'll be able to see that each one is of a different size. So we actually need to go into our bend node here as well. And we wanna go into the bend right there. And we're gonna do essentially the same thing. So we can just paste in our same formula that we were using, except for this time we wanna do a bend, and then we need to set our default value if it fails, and we'll set that just to negative 90 for now, just to, so that if it fails, it, each grass blade has some variation in it, or has some bend in it, I should say, because you don't want them standing straight up, that doesn't really look like grass. So maybe we'll drop down the size of our circle here, create something a little bit tighter, and then we could change the amount of grass in our clump as well. Just leave it at something like that. And then if we ever want to set a random seed, we can just use this value and get something that looks completely different. So that's looking pretty good. If you want to set up any sort of uh, variables for this so that you can control this outside of uh, the node tree here, then you can go ahead and do that. I'm not gonna go over that. I have other videos that cover how to set up HDAs. So if you wanna, wanna learn how to do that, check those out. But this is pretty much how you go about generating grass inside of Houdini. Super simple and easy. Actually, we do need to do one more thing though, and we want to UV our geometry. So we're just gonna use the, the labs auto UV. So if you wanna have this enabled, I think you have to go up and enable the labs shelf. Um, actually, I think it's called like the, yeah, it's called the, the lab shelf now. It used to be called the game dev tool set, but it is the lab shelf now and then the auto UV. So if we just click in our viewport and hit, uh, Oh, should be able to hit five, there we go. Hit five, you can see that this is right away doing exactly what we need, which is creating different uh, UVs for all of our grass here. And it is not overlapping at all and it's not cutting anything off. So you might have to play around with this a little bit. I had in the other one that I made, I did have to mess around with this a little bit, but this looks like it's pretty solid to start off with. So 
super simple to set up. And if you want to go from here and you want to generate a field of grass, it'd be super simple to do that as well. So you can just drop in another grid. And then from here, we'll make it bigger. So let's go maybe 100 by 100. See what that looks like. A little bit bigger than that. Let's go 300 by 300. And let's crank these up. And we'll just drop in a mountain node just to give it some variation in the, some like undulation, I should say. And we'll crank that up and crank up our size scale. Maybe set this to something like 50. There we go. And that's all right. And then from here, we can just essentially do the same thing, which is the copy stamp. I have a HDA that I've set up for this specific thing, which is a copy of points, which essentially does the exact same thing that we did here with this copy and this transform, except for it just doesn't have the, uh, the bend here. It just has rotations for X, Y, and Z and the scale. As you can see right here, if I click on it, X, Y, Z, and then scale. And it basically just automates the process for us. So all we have to do is drop these two in. And then once we view it, you can see that it has created a ton of geometry and I actually forgot to do one more thing, which is to scatter some points onto the geometry. And we want to drop this down. Let's go ahead and just view these. That's actually not too bad, but it looks like we got some sort of rotation issues going on, which is because all of this random rotation that I have set up, which we don't necessarily want. We would probably just want, I think it'd be Y in this case. Yep, the Y rotation. That way it's randomly rotating these. And then it also has the random scale, as you can see there. And let's just do a merge. Drop that in and then this mountain node. And now you can see that we have our grass field on top of this geometry. Super simple to do. Um, I will be making this copy to points available soon. Uh, there's more to come on that. I'm gonna have a bunch of different HDAs and stuff that I'm going to be making that I'll make available. But for now, uh, stay tuned on that. There'll be, there'll be more to come and I'll have an announcement video with that. So if you wanna get this copy to points, just make your life a little bit easier, make things a little bit quicker so you don't have to set up this copy stamp and this transform every time, unless you wanna use um, some other variables inside of here, then this is super quick and easy just to do the rotation and the scale. So keep an eye out for that. That's coming, like I said, here before too long, but super simple to set this sort of a thing up inside of Houdini with a different gra uh, grass generator. And then you could also set up each individual scatter to uh, randomize these values further, but we're not going to do that in this video. Uh, it's basically the same thing that we're doing with this copy stamp. So you can kind of apply the knowledge that you gained from this to get into that. But hopefully this helped you out and you, know, you can create some grass uh, that you can then generate a bunch of different variations and use those inside of your scenes. So like I said, I do have a bunch more videos on my channel for, for other Houdini tips on how to do certain things. I do go over more in depth on how to do this copy, uh, the copy stamp, copy to points with random rotation. Uh, but it, if you want to learn more about that, make sure you check that video out. Um, I also have a bunch of other tips for Houdini and for Cinema 4D and Redshift as well. So make sure you check those out as well. But thank you guys for watching and have a good day.